Welcome back to Just Talking, and we have a great guest uh, here today, and that is June Angela, who is an excellent singer, performer, and actress. And June, nice to see you today. Thank you. It's great to see you, too. And then, uh, well, I know you got a great singing voice. Where did it all start? If you could bring it back as far as did you go take classes into singing, and where did that all get started? Um, gee, I guess I've been singing since I was a kid. Uh, I studied vocal lessons after a while. I was performing since age five, and um, yes, it's a long time ago. And uh, I made my operatic debut at the age of 10 with the New York City Opera, and I hold the record as the youngest soloist soprano in the history of the opera company there, which is terrific. But I started, you know, to take formal singing lessons and uh, grew out from there, and then just was fortunate enough to have great singing teachers. And they tell me, though, that when I was born, that I had a great set of lungs, because when I was crying, I guess I cried aloud and um, had good projection <laughs> for my voice. Well, everybody remembers you in the Electric Company, and what a great show that is. Um, let's hear, how did that all get started? Uh, how did you get involved in the Electric Company? Um, that was actually something, they were very um, open-minded at that time. When they were auditioning for children, they requested uh, black and white children, because that's all that was um, usually seen on television. And my agent at that time said, you know, can you just give her an audition? Just, you know, let her perform for you. And they said, okay. And I went in and uh, I guess they liked what they saw. And the rest is history. I got to be on it from the pilot to the very end. I think it was 760 shows, six seasons that we actually oh. filmed this. And maybe for those who haven't seen the show, you were in the uh, the short circus. And maybe for those who don't know what that is, what was the short circus? The short circus was a um, a rock band of five children who sang the various educational songs, like um, an E on the end, which taught how to have a, a short vowel like plan, and you add an E, and it becomes plain. You know, an E on the end, and that will depend. Uh, whether it has an E on the end, if this word is plan and this word is plain. And Mel, um, Mel Mounds, who was played by Morgan Freeman, was the DJ. And he used to announce these new singles that they'd have from the short circus. And so we were the musical group that used to sing the songs. And then as the time wore on and the seasons went on, then um, we got to do more skits and do regular uh, plain acting as well without singing. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm taking my case to a higher court. And it seemed, how was like the rehearsal since you were, uh, you know, 10 or, or at a very young age? Um, was it shot in the summertime? Was it all year round? How, what was sort of like the rehearsal schedule? It was uh, all year round, six months a year. And I go to school during the day. And then uh, I think it was about three o'clock. We would um, learn songs and we'd go to the recording studio and actually record the songs and we'd learn the choreography. And then a couple of days later, we'd go to the studio and shoot the actual songs. It was quite a, a, a busy schedule when you stop and look back now. At that time, you know, I was a kid. I had a great time. We did seven songs in a week and um, for the pilot. And it was, you know, terrific. We just, just did it. And now I, I look back and go, wow, that was a lot of a lot of stuff we were doing throughout the, the week and then going to school at the same time. But uh, I had a blast, it was great. He works with some great people there as well. I think uh, Irene Cara was in the Short Circus, and I think the girl from Willy Wonka, and then the adult actors, uh, 
Bill Cosby and um, Morgan Freeman. All the, how was it worked with the, with the cast of Electric Company? Yes. Oh, it was great. Rita Moreno was wonderful. Um, she actually, uh, when I grew up, I played Tupton in the King and I with Yul Brenner on Broadway. And uh, she, in the movie, did The King and I with Yul Brenner. She played the same role. So when she came to see the show, of course, she knew Yul Brenner. And she came backstage and she said, Junie, you know, you better watch out. I still remember the lines in that role. So she was terrific. She was, you know, really great. And to think I grew up working with this woman who was Rita Moreno. And then years later, playing the role that she did in the film with Yul Brenner on Broadway, uh, it, it was great. So she was wonderful. Throughout the years, I kept in touch with her. And um, Morgan Freeman, my gosh, I think, wow, that's Morgan Freeman. And we just, you know, he was Morgan. <laughs> and uh, we work in the studio, you know, all the time doing skits. And I, I look back and I see some of the early skits that I did with him. And one of them, I think I was 11. And he played this uh, counter uh, ice cream man. And I was asking for a banana split. And he had this banana and he actually split the banana in half and you saw my face going, what? And uh, so things like that. And um, I had a wonderful time and, and it was great to be able to work with these wonderful people. And I learned a lot from working with them that helped me throughout my career as I grew older. We are the kids known as Whimper and Wine. The thing that was, was just astounding when I see the show now is that there's so much in there. First, you're, they're learning, which was the main thing for the, the audience to learn from, from the language. And then, but also you got the singing, the dancing, the skits. And then also I want to talk about is the visual effects uh, in that. It's, there's so many aspects to it. How was it working with the, like, the visual effects at that time? That was very wonderful. And I think something that was so iconic to the show was called a silhouette blend. And you probably would remember that it was all in shadow and silhouette and the two faces would be like this and one would go, you know, like ch ah, chow, and you'd see the, the syllable, the CH would come out of the person's mouth and then the other part of the word would come out of the other person's mouth and everybody remembers that. And so they had uh, green screens back in those days, who knew what they were, but they were quite advanced. We had Spider-Man crawling on the walls and we were able to be elves and candy, candy you know, cakes and whatnot. So they had a lot of those things that uh, people take for granted now, but years ago, they were state of the art. You've all heard the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now you're going to hear about Snow White's brother, Snowball and the Six Dwarfs. You were on some cover of the magazines of the Electric Company of uh, Rockin' Out in the band, and there's one where your Doug Henning has got you suspended on the top of the Twin Towers. Was that picture doctored, or did that really happen? It was a real, real, undoctored picture, and it was on top of the Twin Towers in New York City, the highest levitation in the world. Yes, that is a true picture. So did they say, don't report to Studio 1A, or report to the top of the tower? <laughs> yes, right? That <laughs> one, uh, yes, that was definitely not in the studio. That was in the air and under the blue sky. How was that experience uh, when you did I that? I was so honored. Um, they asked me to be the one to, uh, to be levitated by him. And it's the uh, Guinness Book of Records, the highest levitation in the world. I don't think you you'd find anybody breaking that record relatively soon. Was, who was, who was, who was, the guy who caught my eye, eyes, who was, the guy who made me was, cry, who was, who was, the guy who said who was, who was, who was, you are. Um, when they did Sesame Street on Ice, it seems like they, with the band, The Short Circus, did they ever talk about having you guys tour or something like that at the time? You know, we did a couple of dates. We went to the Airy Crown Theater in Chicago. Really? Uh, played uh, Alice Tully Hall at Lincoln Center. We didn't do a lot, but we did. And uh, the crowds came, the children were there with their parents because it was an educational show and it was done so 
uh, in such a fun way that nobody thought that they were being taught all these lessons that were so wonderful to be taught and important about reading. It was just fun to go see the show and watch the short circus, sing the songs and dance, and then they'd sing along. And, um, and it, was, it was a great thing. I remember being in the subway in New York, because we, we shot in New York, and kids in the, in the uh, subway would come up to me, go, the electric company, or hey, you guys. So it was quite popular. And as I said, just uh, going to Chicago and being in New York, doing the concerts, uh, it was great, but we didn't do more touring than that. That was about, that was about it. The show is done. We hate to run. We're sorry, but that's all. So when the show came to a close and they did the, the reruns, um, I believe you were on another TV show uh, with uh, Pat Morita. It was a spinoff of Welcome Back, Cotter, uh, Mr. T and Tina. So uh, how was it working with Pat Morita on that show? He was terrific. He was absolutely wonderful. Um, he played my dad. It, it was a show called Mr. T and Tina. It was the very first um, Asian American sitcom ever. And, uh, I'm proud of to I'm proud to be a part of that as well now that um, people say, gosh, June, you've been a, a part of history and stuff and first. So I'm like, okay, that, that's fine. So I'm happy to be part of that. Pat Morita was wonderful. And then years later, he played my dad again. Um, there was a, a TV movie called Blind Alleys and Cloris Leachman played my mother and he played my father. And this was a drama. And uh, it was written by David Henry Wong um, and uh, it, it was in 1985, I believe. So he, he was my dad again, and then years, we had always stayed in touch, and years later I saw him, and he always said, you know, they're my, my first on-screen daughter. You're my daughter. You're my daughter, and he, he was terrific. He was a great guy. Well, not only on screen, but you were also on stage and on Broadway, I believe. So let, let's talk about your the stage career. Um, now, I believe you're in the musical of Shogun. Uh, let's talk about that. Yes, uh, Shogun was uh, based on the book by James Curvell. They had made that into a miniseries, and I played Larry, Lady Mariko, who was the um, leading lady. And I got to meet James Curvell and talk to him, and that was a wonderful experience for me on Broadway. And I got nominated for a Tony Award Best Leading Actress in the Musical and a Drama Desk Award nominee as well for that show. Um, and again, and looking back and thinking I've worked with these people in that particular show, I learned how to fight like a samurai. So they had real Japanese um, fight masters come in and uh, teach me how to do that. And the rehearsals were so tremendous. You'd have to um, kind of bend your knees and be in this kind of position to learn how to walk. And you'd spend a week doing these type of rehearsals just to start the basics. And I remember, um, waking up one day and couldn't walk because my my knees were in such a position for the whole uh week that time but it was it was um a great experience for me doing shogun and before that i got to do king and i which was another broadway show um and in that one i i met richard rogers himself and he used to come to the theater every wednesday and be backstage watching the show from the wings and uh and I'd say, you know, hello, Mr. Rogers. And he'd say, hello, June, nice to see you. And then now looking back, I think, my goodness, that was the real Richard Rogers. He wrote The King and I, he wrote Oklahoma and Carousel and South Pacific and all these wonderful musicals. And so I was very honored to have been a, a part of that as well and meet these icons. Um, you touched on The King and I, uh, how was it working with uh, Yael Brenner? He was the king, and um, I had a wonderful time working with him, but he definitely was the king. I worked with him for three and a half years, got to go to London, play the London Palladium for a year and a half, which was uh, quite an honor. Usually they only let people come in for six months, but um, the British equity, I guess, kind of made an exception and uh, let me stay. And I never missed a show, wound up doing 1,300 performances, Three and a half years old, although Yul Brynner never missed a show either, so I guess he was also an inspiration. 
And um, as I said, he was wonderful. He treated me really great. But he was the king, that's for sure. Uh, maybe for those who don't know the theater community, what do they mean by Broadway, Off-Broadway, Touring Company? Is it the same show or different? Maybe if you can explain a little bit about that. Different Broadway is a, a place called Broadway in New York City, and it usually has the biggest theaters, um, and it's a marvelous tourist attraction. It's uptown, and they have um, quite a wonderful variety of shows. They have plays and musicals, and Off-Broadway is a level of the same professionalism, but it's underneath there. The houses are smaller, and uh, it's not necessarily on Broadway. And uh, I've worked with a lot of off-Broadway shows as well. And then they have um, regional theater, which is theater that's performed around the country in different regions, which are particular to the place like Los Angeles, or uh, Philadelphia, or Chicago, or these different regions of the country. And then touring companies are companies that go from place to place to place so that various people around the country can get to see the show if they can't come to New York um, to see the, the original production. Is there one you like to, one over the other, is it stage, performing, uh, TV? Is there, is there a preference for you? I love it all. I love it all. Every, every medium has its own different special things. Theater has live audiences, so you can connect to them immediately. You hear the laughs when you're telling the jokes. You can feel the drama and the tension in the air, or you can hear sniffles if it's something sad. Um, I did a play in Los Angeles with Danny Glover. It was a two-character play called Johan. And uh, that was a, for me, it was a wonderful experience working with him to start with. And the character went from, from everything emotionally <laughs> that you can imagine. So to hear the people reacting to the laughs and then at the end crying and, and you know, bonding with the characters was tremendous. And then television, you don't have the live audience, but you can reach so many different people at the same time. And working with cameras, there's always take two, as opposed to doing stage, which, you know, in one shot, that's it. Uh, and, and you get to go to different locations when you're doing television as well. Um, so I love them both. And, and recording is great too, because you're singing or doing uh, voice stuff, audiobooks. I do a lot of audiobooks these days as well, which I enjoy. Children's books, as a matter of fact, I love doing those the most. And um, although, no, adult books are pretty good too, but children's books are kind of dear to me because of Electric Company. And, um, and films as well, you know, location things or studio, they all have their wonderful uh, individual great things. Um, I believe you were in that uh, recent TV show, Fresh Off the Boat, and uh, that uh, up-and-coming actress, that Constance Wu, she is really, really good. So when you work with these actresses, do you spot some things like that? Like, gee, this person is, you know... Yes, you know, if I play the family psychic, Madame Jing, and uh, so that was another fun role to be playing this, you know, psychic person who can foresee things into the future. And... Uh, and who knew at that time that Constance Wu was going to be this major star in the movie, Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, so I'm very happy for her. And it opened the door for lots of, of different audiences. And I'm so happy that it wasn't just an, uh, an Asian American or an Asian film. It, it appealed to everybody, the wide audiences around the world, because it was a human story. It was two people who were having this um, wonderful, funny, but touching relationship. And everybody enjoyed watching these two people, not necessarily of, oh, this person you know, was Asian or whatever, it didn't matter. They were just human people and, and it was a great film. And I'm happy for her. She went on to do another film um, with Jennifer Lopez and stuff. So who knew at that time, but you never know. So I'm happy, it's great. And for you, is there any upcoming projects we should uh, know about? Uh, I know right now everything's kind of on the law right now, but uh, I don't know if there's anything that you can bring up. Um, on hold, there were things that I was supposed to be doing that now they're on hold, and I don't know whether they will be revived. Who knows? It's a, it's quite an interesting, not very, not very good time for anybody these days, right. but especially for um, my particular business because now all the rules have to be rewritten with uh, COVID going on, because now you can't be in close proximity with people. And um, 
it's it's difficult. So the only thing I'm fortunate enough that I can do is voiceover things, which I can do alone. And uh, you don't have to be in a crowded set. You can do it in the comfort of a secluded space, so you won't be contagion. You know, won't be contagious or anything. So I'm doing audiobooks, which I love to do. And as I said, it's something that it's easy to do now and um, something that, that can be done because who knows when, when the rest of the industry will be able to open again, especially theater, my goodness, with the projection of the voice and the audience there live, uh, it'll, it's gonna be a little tough. But as I said, you know, there's so much going on in the world. So we just, everybody has to change everything. And, Hopefully everything in a good way. Um, let's talk about, do you have a website uh, that people can find more information about you? And let's hear all about that. Yeah, it's um, juneangela.com. That is my website. If you liked electric company things, there's a whole page of electric company stuff with pictures and uh, things throughout the years and stuff. I, I can admit I'm not that great at updating it very frequently, but you can see things on there that are, uh, that are interesting to see throughout my career. And then you can also write as well to me through the website. I think you also recorded a CD of, of songs, is that correct? Yes, I did. Uh, it was a CD of um, my own songs based from, or songs that I had sung throughout my career. Some were from electric companies, some were from a show called Sayonara, a couple were from Shogun, then I did a couple of jazz songs and uh, did different twists to them. And yes, that was, that was my solo CD and it, it came out. Um, and there are pictures in there as well from various costumes and shows that I had done. Well, June, I just want to thank you so much for talking with us today. It, uh, you're just an excellent actress, singer, performer, and again, the electric company still remains on top for me. Just, just a phenomenal show. So uh -huh. we'll check out your website. We'll check out uh, all your work and any upcoming projects that come along. And thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you. <laughs>